Hey, Sahil, how's it going? It's going great. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Let's see. Can you say something real quick? Mm, yes. Okay, cool. All right. I think it's on the recording. Okay, so. All right. Okay, so hopefully. Some, okay, hopefully somebody else shows up because right now the window size is not cooperating with this recording situation. All right, let's see what can we do here about that. Um, no. Oh, okay, great. Hey, how's it going? Let's see. All right, okay. Hmm. Oh, well. All right, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Maybe if somebody else joins, it'll sort of re-move around the, the, the faces on the screen to the right place. Um, right now, it's it's not looking so good. So, okay, so, we yeah, we haven't met for a while. Um, let me bring up the notes here, and I am sharing, right? Okay, great. Um, oh, come on. So how so, so one of the things that has gone sideways is the master to uh, main rename thing. Yes, yeah, that is uh, that is causing a lot of cascading problems. Yes, yeah, I tried to go in and I did as much as I could to to to, to fix that with the. Um, there's still an issue. I'll show you guys. So I have my computer back. Um, I had been. Wow, this is really slow. Okay, so. This computer that I'm on is 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 problematic, um, but I got access to this remote computer back. Um, so I'm hoping that um, come on, I'm hoping that this um, this uh, you know hopefully things can get easier. Right now, it, so I had I had an issue when I was going through the um, when I was doing the uh, the, the changing of master to main um, when I was uh, cleaning up the repo and removing the large files that had been in there um, where Windows was blue screening on me when I cloned the repo uh, every time so now I have my Linux machine back um, so hopefully that uh, gets things going so let's see so uh, main master to main issues so we'll try to enumerate some of them Okay, um, Friday, April 1st, 2022. Okay, so anything else, Sahil, that uh, we should cover? From my side, I, I actually had tests last week, so I couldn't really work on something. Yeah. But yeah. I have some points, uh, uh, mainly around the things that, that is this uh, renaming stuff. And okay, great. I still tried to clone, but, but I don't think that we have solved the uh, size issue with get stuff no we have not yeah i think it cut it in half i, th I think it's around 500 meg now instead of like one over a gig but there's still something yeah. in there and i think it might be the pdfs um so yeah that could be what's going on um also uh, the other two things were uh, that i uh, i was waiting on actually we were stuck on the feedback thing on on the installation video that, that we oh, yeah. haven't uploaded it yet as well. Oh, so yeah. That would be great if we can upload it. And you asked something about it on, on Twitter, and I did reply. But then probably it got lost in some, some of the threads. Okay. So so you asked about something, I will just get to it. But yes, you have you said that we haven't shown that uh, VS Code config. But we did, it's right? It's actually there. Okay, okay. I must have just... I so that is I fine. Uh, yeah, I swear I looked at that part. Other than that, Okay, so uh, the, the, the session I took, uh, it's recording should be up uh, in a couple of days as per the organization. Awesome! So oh, that's if, great. If if its recording goes live, then we can put it in documentation. For meanwhile, what we can do is we can remove the registration link from the the GSOC page, and and insert the slides there. So I have great. slides uh, drive link. I, I'll I'll share it. And we can put it on the, the presentation page as well. Um, I think there's a, a mm -hmm. presentations page or a publications page. GSOC um, talk will add to website. 
under GSOC 2022 and um, publications. Also, we need to you know, uh, review a lot of PRs. We do, yeah, we have PRs. Mostly PR. documentation, we have a lot of them because documentation is good. Yeah, there is, uh, there's, there was a number of things there. Okay, so we'll jump right into PR review. Because um, I assume uh, you guys who are here, I have to, both of you have uh, PRs, so we'll, we'll jump right in. So is it Garov? Uh, yeah, I'm Gaurav. Hello. Hey, I'm Gaurav. From India. Hey, glad to have you on board. So, okay, okay. Oh, sweet. Did you do this one? Oh, this is fantastic. Um, this is great. Wow, my computer's being really slow today. That's just like story as of late. All right, come on. Review and post on LinkedIn. Huh? All right. Uh, the post I shared on, on Discord, I'm talking about that. Post you shared on Gis Discord. Oh, um, can you send it on the, the community Gitter channel? Just because we're on the recording. Yeah. I don't want to open a bunch of private messages between. I don't I don't remember what else we've said, and I don't know if there was anything. So, um, okay, so great. So, files changed. This is great. Daytime, daytime. Okay, so do we have a test for this? Um, so, uh, no, I haven't had a test. Okay, okay. Well, and that's good because so what we can do here is uh, we can actually um, we can uh, add a test within the examples. Um, so daytime format. Okay, modify daytime. Time. Good time. Okay. So this outputs the current time. So we should probably name these, you know, something. We should, we should probably name these something about now uh, because we're looking at, you know, now, daytime now. Okay. Um, and then um, let me add this to the meeting minutes. I was just, I was really hoping this one would get done. Nice. Thank you. Um, okay, so, so, and then daytime format, so modified daytime. Okay, so, and this one should probably take a, uh, input here of, um, you know, uh, daytime. And, uh, you know, for, format. Um, let's see. And I mean, yeah, so right now, let's see, current date, data. Okay, so we should be using, um, uh, we should be using, uh, this is the wrong, this is the reverse of what I want. Wow, exceptionally slow day. Um, okay. Wow, this is like molasses. Um, okay. It looks like your, your CPU is struggling with, with video. Yeah. Stuff, so video on that will help. Uh, oh yeah, maybe, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the hell it is mad about here. Okay, so this, um, let's see, this function here Return a string representation. Yeah. So this function here, or this method on date time, um, will format it, you know, according to the format uh, specifiers um, that are they're they're pretty standard across programming languages. Um, Python has the specific list, I believe, here. 
Um, so this is helpful. So uh, let's use um, daytime strip of time. Um, and it is right here. Okay. So we'll use that instead of doing this to stir stuff. Instead okay. of sure. stir. And then let's see. And here's the docs. This is the, this is like the, okay. I've been meaning to put these two links next to each other for a long time uh, because it's always for some reason hard. For me to uh, no issues. I'll check it out on my own. I understood the point. Yeah. Okay, great. So here you go. Um, yeah. And, and you've got it. So there you go. Um, Great. Okay. So then, and then this should return a daytime, uh, daytime. All right. So then let's see. So then as far as examples go, um, and this should return a daytime, daytime. So I also took a look at this PR versus code art, some stuff that I was thinking about. That the definitions that, that have been introduced in this one. The definitions. Are kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is. Current daytime. Yeah, I don't think we want. Let's see. Two, two things for daytime. It should be just daytime, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, one of these should be, because this one is outputting a formatted date time, like, um, yeah, good catch. So this one should take as an input, um, yeah, and I was playing around with this recently, and, uh, okay, and that's not the right way to define, let's see, so, um, so, yeah, I was looking at this recently, um, and I think there's a sweet spot, um, in between, um, I think there's a sweet spot with, um, the config classes where we can, um, where we can basically, uh, map properties within config classes to, um, inputs. Uh, so I was playing with that somewhere. I can't remember where it was, but I think that'll help us sort of say instead, because the definition stuff is a little, um, it's, it's not that, you know, the, 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 it's the base, the base layer is there, right. Of what we, what we're looking for. Uh, but it needs to be more like ergonomic, right? So we need to, um, we'll probably, uh, I'm looking at figuring out if you could say, basically, here are these config classes. And here are these fields within them, and then these fields get populated by these operations and, and, and so forth, right? So that way you're really dealing with the data structures themselves, and then you're saying the operations either perform, uh, you know, actions on, on the, da the entire data structure, which is the class, the config class, or uh, which is a data class, or on a property within the data class, and then we sort of map those to definitions within um, the instantiated flow. So we'll, we'll, there's yeah, more on that to come, but right now, you know, this is obviously definitions are, are kind of not, not ideal, but the point, the point is, is there. So, um, okay. So, and we said basically that this is, this needs to take a, um, you know, a date time object. Um, and let's see, what is the input? So daytime or well, we shouldn't make that. So, or yeah, daytime. Yeah. Okay. So, we have to find a name that's not daytime. Um, let's see. Uh, daytime object. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's the problem with libraries named like that. Um, <laughs> okay, so this, and then this would be the daytime, right? And then it's going to output a... It's going to output a... Um, you know, date. So now I'll put some kind of string. So daytime stir. 
and finally got my camera. Oh yeah. Nice. All right, so it's very zoomed in on you. Yes, because it is it is kept in a video. Nice. What I do. All right, let's it's see. Most so. of my place actually is kept on my wallet. Are you? Is it auto cropping? Did you get all that set up? No, no. It is. It is a very cheap camera. It has no focus. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I remember. Like you, I remember you just saying recently you were playing with your setup. All right. Yes. Okay, we got on car back. Great. Okay, and then so. All right. And then what's this? So then this guy here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's go look at this one. So this one's just going to have outputs. It's not going to take any inputs. And it's going to be daytime stir. So. Okay. Uh, let's see, so, daytime, daytime, or this is daytime, daytime, no, yeah, and this is all, this is all, you know, so, so, in the future, ideally, we would just wrap, actually, I wonder if we could just do that, um, so, looking at daytime dot, daytime dot now, right, if we were to create, Will this create? Yeah, well, that would create a, a on, on daytime dot daytime dot now. So, like, just creating a function directly off of it um, would be ideal. Um, but I think we're going to need to. I think we're going to need to do this for now. Um, okay. So, and then the daytime objects. So, and I think we're going to have to return it explicitly there's a lot of things that we need to clean up here this is a uh, good perhaps good uh, stuff for to think about um, okay so it outputs the daytime object and then we said that there's a daytime string down here so what we just did here is basically um, all right, we're just going to do this for now. Um, we'll probably change some of this stuff later. Like I was saying, you know, uh, the definitions and everything is not ideal at this point. It really needs to sort of map. So, so there's a current. Currently, we have a gap between um, uh, definitions and like the type typing uh, interface, like the typing uh, functionality that was recently introduced in Python, semi-recently. Um, and so ideally, in the future, we, we get these to be the same, right? The definition is, is the same as, as whatever we annotate as the return types and, and, the, and the argument types. Uh, right now, uh, there's, we have you know, somewhat of a gap there. Um, so this definition class will probably eventually turn into something um, typing user type. Okay, so it'll probably turn into something that's more like new type, like this in the future. Okay. Um, so, but for now it's not um, because we needed some extra metadata. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, okay. So daytime stir, daytime stir. So basically, we said this is the string version. This is the uh, and then this one would be string. This stuff doesn't get used yet, but as a just because. Okay, so uh, so the string representation of the date time, the date time itself, um, which maps to the date time dot date time object, um, that's going to get created here. Um, and then this one outputs. So then this one takes the date time date time object yeah. right here that is output. And okay, and there's an extra comma there, and it outputs the the string representation. Okay, so, and then yeah, we need the format. Okay, so then let's create the format as well. So, all right, we're just. And then the formatting here. So, 
and then you can basically pass so daytime so format so now you can so currently we try like we are kind of taking the format from the user and converting it to that format right uh like... yeah so so and then here you would so 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 not yeah the way you might do this now is basically put your default value from the um from the formatting stuff here right that gives you the right you know the right formatting string um and, and I'll just put sort of, um, you know, something here right now. So I'll just put this. Um, but this is wrong. So then you'll need to go fix it, right? Yeah. Um, so, percent B. Um, so actually, someone did ask about the format, I guess. And actually, it was specifically requested in the issue that you they want the specific format. That's a Y by MM. Uh, yeah. So oh, this yeah. would be the the. Let's see. So I just, default let's... format, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's grab this. So I'll show you guys. Uh, so basically, this is what was meant by that. Is where is it? Here we go. No, oh, I already. Oh no! Wait, where is it? Here. No, oh, here. All right. So you said it was asked for in YYMMDDRR. So that would be, that would correspond to um, year, you know, whatever month is. I'm going to assume it's dash. I'll, I'll work on it. It's, I yeah. understood the form. Right. Okay. So yeah. that should be it. Um, but we'll see. So, and then as far as testing goes, you can just put in, um, so you should just be able to, okay, so, well, this one is going to be uh, kind of problematic here. So, uh, because it changes. Um, so maybe we'll do this one. So basically let's, let's, this one. Yeah. Okay. What should we do with this one? How are we going to do that? I, I, this is always a bit of a, a, a problem when you when you have uh, things that are. Uh, we'll just test that the return type is correct. So, um, yeah. And then here we're going to need to do. All right. So, and did you see the um, the um, the this example here? Let's see. Uh, the one request on the model page, right? Um, no, this one here. Did you see this example? This metastatic analysis? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so... Um, okay, so... And let's see, what is this and why it is... Okay, so yes, yeah, so this is not... Okay, yeah, so this is... Yeah, there's not really definitions being defined here. Okay, so we need to make sure that we have one with definitions being defined as an example. Okay. Um, yeah, I have an in progress on that. Okay. So, yeah, current daytime, daytime object. All right, so yeah, basically all these things just have to match. Um, and as uh, what uh, Sudhanshu a while ago did something to uh, sort of auto figure out what the correct um uh what like to auto create definitions based off of the annotations um and so that stuff is not entirely integrated with the existing um um with the existing uh like manual specification um okay. so there's a gap between if you manually specify then you have to return a um, dictionary, whereas if you just do the auto-generated stuff, then you can just basically return whatever value. So oh, yeah. we still have this gap where somebody needs to go in to, um, here, let me do it on the terminal. So somebody needs to go to a file base, or no, it's in df base. Okay, here. So it's this create definition stuff. So uh, somebody needs to go in here at some point. Um, this is a good sort of pre-GSOC thing to do. And um, make it so that if the definition, if the, um, 
let's see, is it the, yeah, is there annotation? So, is there a class param annotation? Okay. Origin, and okay, what do we have here? Yeah, I think we need to check the definition. Okay, so primitive. Uh, there needs to be some more alignment between the definitions and the... So ideally what would happen is we would come in and we would uh, check the definition to see if the definition has the, um, you know, correct, the same type information as the annotation. And then we would... Um, or let's see. I guess what? Yeah, no. What what needs to be? Let's 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 make this a little simpler. So, uh, if there is only one return type, um, okay. and if there's only one return type, and the return type is not a dictionary, then we should just assume, like, we should have the code in here that um, generates the operation, which is this op here. We should have it just. Um, make it so that it doesn't require that you return a dictionary um, and that it just takes the date time object because it says there's only one output. Um, I'm just going to make it that output. Um, so I think that may, be, that may be in here and it may be in, so which is DFML, DF base, and it may be in, um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh no, it was run, no retry. Okay. It may be in here, so no. Okay, inputs, outputs, run, run no retry, run dispatch. So this is where the operations actually get executed. Um, async gen, yeah, okay, so this is the, this is, we have some problematic code in here. This needs to be cleaned up, but um, as far as this, uh, out, out, output mapping goes, I believe it's right here. Let's see, and output, no, this is, yeah, Hold it on. is. Operation expand. So basically this says, okay, so when, when an operation returns, this needs to be changed here. Um, when an operation returns a, a value, um, like the function returns, uh, we go through and we basically create so the way the data flow stuff works is like there's these input objects and you can sort of think about like all these input objects are just kind of floating around in, in this in this network, um, in this input network. And anything of a matching definition will then, you know, sort of just just go wherever we, we, we declare everything to have, you know, basically I, I receive inputs from these definitions and it's almost like an event stream, right? So anytime you have a new permutation of inputs for an operation, uh, you're effectively, you know, that operation is effectively listening and will be called on, on, on any new permutation, right? So when we have an output, uh, we look at the outputs and we then go in and we create input objects and send them back to the network to then go trigger more operations. So um, in this case, where was the, okay, no, it actually is in here. It's in here, yeah, so... In this case, we are so, and this is the decorator, the at op, which goes yep. and actually creates uh, two classes for a given operation. Um, and this is the auto definition stuff here. So right here, you're seeing it create um, a, the if if there's none given, it basically and there's only one output. It says it names it result. Um, okay. And so if outputs is in kw args. Then, let's see, I think we need to go down here. So when it actually, so this is where it actually calls the function. So this is where, so this is, okay, so if it's a coroutine, it awaits it. Um, if it uses self, it goes in and, and, and creates a self. Um, uh, this, this it, it creates, it, it passes self. Uh, if it sees that it's using self, and then otherwise it, it does the await. So then... Let's see, so then we go down here into the outputs. Okay, so yeah, and so this is where we're checking if the output length is one, so, and if auto definition. So this is what needs to be split up here to satisfy this case where we can just return without, um, without, so let me link to that code. 
Yeah. yeah, so if we were to split up this to basically say, you know, if outputs is, if auto def outputs, or if outputs is one, and then this all stuff goes under, like, if auto def outputs, I'm not sure, I'm just, that's what is happening right now, and then have another case that's like, you know, else, uh, so that would be, you know, not auto def yeah. outputs, then you basically t check if it is a dict, then, you know, uh, return the dict, otherwise, if it's a dict, then do it this. Goes normally. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, otherwise, you know, go make a dict out of it, which is this code here. So it's, there's some moving around that needs to be done. Um, but yeah, that's that's that would be a, a good thing to do, a very good thing to do. Um, and I'm not sure if we have an issue for that. Let's see. Um, so. I don't think there is a there is one. Okay, so. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I don't think there is one either. Uh, no, that's the unifying that. Like inputs. No, yeah, it's not. It doesn't exist. Okay, so yeah, so we could create an issue for this. So basically, um, so what is this line number? Okay. Okay, so df base op. Um, okay, what is this? This is um, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, support uh, single output. Um, support single output without auto deft uh, defined. Um, uh, inputs and outputs. Okay. Great. Okay, so it's thirteen fifty. Okay, so then we'll make a okay. comment here. And we'll say, hey, uh, you know, related discussion on if we fix, then we don't need this suggestion. Uh, it could be done, you know, could be and be done after merging this PR. Could come back and change. And after. 1350 is address. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and then, okay, so there's the format. We got the format. We created the now object. We created all our, we added our def extra definition. Um, then we talked about how that could change. We output the string. We have the string definition. And then we just need to add tests. So to add tests, let's see. So where's a good example of this? Um, let's see. Um, so when you're talking about tests, so you actually want me to uh, verify the return type like by using unit test, right? Uh, well, so there's multiple options um, for you know what what kind of testing you can do. Um, so basically, we have we have several forms of testing within the project. There's um, there's the unit tests. There's, um, yeah, there's the unit tests, there's the documentation tests, which actually run uh, tests on the restructured text files, um, and then there's the uh, doc tests, which are um, the actual, like, uh, let's see, this, I think this one is a good one. So, which would be, you know, these carrot, carrot, carrot um, tests. So, okay. um, and these actually get run with the unit tests, which, um, so, oh, okay. yeah, so you can actually, so, so the nice part about this is you can just write your test as documentation and then that way, um, you know, you don't have to write a bunch of extra unit tests and you That's end up documenting it as well. Yeah. Um, so ideally we would just write, you know, something like this. So uh, I'll just give this, um, as an example. Um, and now the tricky part is of course, uh, it compares the output 
uh, unit test so framework. Yeah, so you might just want to say, you know, you know, call this function. You know, you might just want to call this function and then and then put type around it and then put in the example, you know, that it's the correct type. Learn. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You got it. Um, so uh, uh, example doc test session test. Okay. Great. Okay, I think we're done here. Um, and then, of course, you know, do the same for for this one. Um, this one, though, you could pass in a custom daytime object. Um, example here: uh, pass in statically created daytime. Daytime, uh, so that date is always the same. Okay, cool. Um, all right, great. Any any questions, comments, concerns on that? Uh, no, I think I'm clear. If I'll have any, I'll definitely either approach Sahil or I'll uh, like comment it out on the GitHub. Great, great. All uh, right. So, and then yeah, there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of missing uh, images in here. So we're we're gonna have to fix that. So let's see what else do we got. So uh, let's let's do one of Ankur's uh, or uh, on, is it Ankur or Ankar? Uh, Unkar. 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 Okay. Did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> Can you say it one more time for me, please? Unkar. Unkar. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, let's see. We have this one from you. And didn't you do a docs a docs PR previously as well? I believe you'd we'd we'd got one merged from you before. Let's see. Or maybe that was one that ended yeah, up yeah. getting closed. Okay. All right. So documentation. Oh, hey, look at this. Uh, this looks familiar. <laughs> um, let's see. So. Yeah, it was. Great. Okay. So. Oh, this is great. Come on, okay, so the rebase command, rebasing in brand. So let's look at this file here so that we can see it. So this is great. Okay. Curse people to find having trouble. Okay, yeah. Okay, formatting, so many pull requests, rebasing in branches. Perfect. Okay, so the git rebase git git rebase command allows you to easily change okay, so um, we're looking at the documentation around how to contribute. Um, and and it describes, you know, clone the repo, uh, check out a new branch. Um, and then, you know, below we, we talk about uh, formatting your, uh, basically your commit messages and your issue and pull requests um, and, uh, you know, how to submit a pull request. And then we talk about uh, rebasing in branches. So now you've submitted your, um, you've submitted your uh, pull request to the repo, something happened in main, um, and then uh, now you have to go and, uh, uh, you know, grab the changes in from main and add it to your branch before you can continue because maybe we fixed something in a different PR that was needed in your PR, right? So for yeah. example, um, with this one, if we did that 1350 and then came back to it, then you know that we'd want to rebase in main. So uh, so yeah, the rebase commands allows you to easily change a series of commits, modifying the history of your repository, reorder, edit or squash commits together, get rebase is typically used to uh, edit previous commit command. Okay, so to rebase all the commits between another branch and the current branch state, you can enter the following command. So interact with other branch. Okay, so okay, cool. So let's see. So and then we want to talk about. Um, okay, so link under the preview bar. Okay, so how how did you try to add the image? Yeah, so I tried to edit the image using the link that you had in, uh, uploaded in the issue tab. Okay. I, in the and also in the preview section it was coming, but uh, after uploading it appeared as a link. So. Okay. Okay. So let's see. So let's go check out 
another so so when I so basically I can never remember how to do anything so all I do is I look for examples within the code base um, and so if I wanted to know how to do an image uh, I just look for I just do git grep image and, and I'd look in the docs right and so now I'd go and, and I'd look at one of these you know one of these examples here so um, so let's see what's one with a with a URL on it okay so here's one with a URL Okay, so we'll just copy this. So, so what we should see here is that if we go in and and add this, so let's go, let's go say um, to rebase the line. All right, so okay, so we'll say no. So let's grab this. Copy image address. Yeah, let's just do this for now. All right, so we'll say image and uh, when uh, you have an open PR and you want merge in or to take the changes that happened in main and add them back to your PR, uh, you can do the following. Okay, so let's just see if this image works here. Um, so, and then once again, you know, get, get, get grep is your friend. Um, and also uh, the other thing that I, that I uh, find very helpful is, um, Let's see, let's look at this. So git log dash p. So say I'm looking for something, right? Um, you know, I wanted to find out something about an image um, and I found it in this testing file. This is just an you know, arbitrary example here. Uh, and I wanted to know, you know, what, what, what all the changes were that happened there. I could do git log dash p and I could, I could give that file path. Okay, okay. Um, very, very helpful. I find it very helpful. So uh, let's see what happens here. It won't render this, will it? Okay, so let's just commit it, um, and then so docs contributing. Uh, what is this? Fuck it. Uh, add reversing main image. So let's see what it looks like then. And we'll say view file. Okay, there it is. All right, so it works. Um, so in the future, so ideally we we, we want to get this mermaid plugin working. So you guys you guys probably recently saw, but um, you know GitHub um, introduced support. Uh, oh, that's why it's uh, you must have dark mode on. Um, the GitHub introduced support for. Um, the mermaid diagrams. Let's see, did we? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was like, why is it? I feel like, how did you get an image that wasn't a uh, blank background? Okay, so, um, yeah, so, it, yeah, so they re release support for rendering the uh, mermaid diagrams and they render as little SVGs. Um, so, so we need to, um, we need to, uh, we need to enable that at some point where we actually have Sphinx render these images. It's like it includes this JavaScript library and it generates SVGs on, on demand from these little uh, diagrams, which look like, and let me actually, I forgot to do this, but there we go. So that is, you know, what the, what the diagram looks like. Um, so uh, that's yeah, that's is the code for the diagram. And if you go to, uh, for example, like this mermaid live editor, um, you can I don't know if you guys have seen this already, but uh, if you haven't, so you can you know you can you can edit it live here, um, and that's fun. So 
uh, it's nice because you can track them in Git. Yeah. So right now, obviously, this is not tracked in Git. This is a URL to an image. Um, but eventually, you know, we'll go through and we'll 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 add the mermaid uh, diagram to it. And actually, that that is something that we'll need to say here. Uh, and I think there's a few places where we have like, you know, this is a, a comment. Maybe, and then maybe we had this discussion earlier too about having mermaid render in space. Uh, do what? We, do we have an issue for this one? Uh, do we? Yeah. Let's see. I'm not sure. Um, I believe. I think it's somewhere. Let's see. So we need that. I'd be, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I would be surprised if this one's not in there. Yeah. So what happened here? So blocked by. Oh, this never got fixed. Eleven days ago. Temporary works. This is not a solution. Um, okay, so yeah, so the main problem here was, yeah, I think we're using that NB Sphinx and they have a different, yeah, different version of this um, dependency um, JavaScript. Um, and uh, so basically people say, you know, basically just go run the CLI. Well, the CLI, the CLI starts a, a, a headless version of your browser and then goes and takes a screenshot. So that, that basically, I mean, that slows, you want to talk about slowing down the docs build, that slows down the docs build. So that's why we haven't done that yet. Um, so eventually, basically when this gets fixed, then we'll go do this and until then we'll just, you know, basically link screenshots and, and put in comments of the diagrams and, and, and just go from there. Uh, that way we can just regenerate the images if we need to. So, um, let's see. So where was the last commit? Um, okay. Oops. All right. So, add mermaid for this main. Okay, and let's just make sure that this is actually how you do a restructured text comment. Okay, yes, it is. Great. Um, okay, so cool. Um, so, oh, and actually, let me just, so this is, I don't know, let's see. So this, so let's try to, we try to keep things to, um, to 80 columns, um, where appropriate, so uh, I'll just chop that there. That's probably 80. Um, and did you, so did you write this yourself or did you get this from somewhere? Uh, yeah, I took help uh, from somewhere and wrote it in my language and uh, the, from the like where I've seen as well. Okay, so do you remember where you got it from? Uh, we should I we should have, make sure that we yeah. reference any any sources if yeah, we, yeah 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 so uh, let me find it right okay okay yeah we'll just sort of wrap this okay. So this looks over 80 columns to me. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, this is great. Um, yeah, so uh, I took it from GitHub Docs only. Like okay. This. Do you have a link you could paste in like the yeah, GitHub yeah. chat? Okay, yeah. so. And we can say, let's see, like, um, you know. Okay, great. There's the video, right? That's that's the video link. So, uh, no, this this one is the post link, I guess. 
Oh, this is the, oh, for LinkedIn. Okay, great. We can do that today. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Things have been very hectic. I have, uh, yeah, things have been nuts. Yeah, okay. I just just picked you up for that because, you know. Okay, so let's download this. Yeah, I'm moving. I'm moving today. Uh, it's very exciting. Let's see. So. Okay. So, okay. Did you get, did you paste that link somewhere, um, to this, to the source? Yeah, okay. Paste, here. Paste it in the Git Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Wow. My computer is molasses today. All right. Okay. And so, yeah, so, you know, key takeaways here are, um, that we, uh, you know, we want to, you know, reference, reference our sources. Um, the mermaid diagram is still borked. Um, so we're waiting on that. Still waiting. Good thing we checked. Um, you never know if they might've fixed it. Um, and, uh, then, uh, and, and for now basically include mermaid diagrams in, in a comment and, um, you know, just put, just put a link to the image. Um, so let's see, are we going to, yeah, we're going to get kicked off the call. We're nearing the end of our time. My computer's locked. Okay. And okay, so we got that. Let's add so, that. So before we go, or if you had some question around the adding motors, uh, so maybe you can pick it up and we can document. Yeah, it. Oh, let's talk about. Please repeat. It. You you had some question about adding motors. Yeah, right? I was not clear with the third part of the uh, second project in the GSOC. Like a uh, what exactly? Like uh, I'll explain. Like I'll tell you what I've understood. In the mm -hmm. first, I have to add few data sets uh, which is very similar to the iris data set as they have in the already in dffml okay so and wait the so let's part, we, are, uh, we, are, we have to add so so link yeah, so, so which one are we which one let me let me make sure i'm looking at something um because i can't i can't remember so, uh, the number two. Idea. okay so let's see so time, time series forecasting. Forecasting. Yeah. okay time series forecasting okay so let me bring it up here so that we can look at it because uh, I'm going to get lost if we don't. Uh, just to see. Uh, if you want, I can uh, send the link in the chart. That's okay. I got it. All right. So. In the meeting chart. Okay. And I'll put it in. So let's see. So yeah. we did PR review. We did date time. And then we did uh, re get uh, contributing docs. Get. Um, and then. So then we have this. Okay. So what? What? Okay. So let's let's go over any questions then. Yeah. Sure. So regarding the first part, I'm very pretty clear about it. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to confirm if I've got it right. I am supposed to add new data sets mm -hmm. inside DFFML, and uh, I am supposed to do it in the similar manner as we have the Iris data set mm -hmm. included in it. Yes. And these, the data sets are supposed to be like uh, you, and I am giving the examples of the data sets that I'm supposed to add. Mm -hmm. So that part was pretty clear. Uh, the second part I was confused with was uh, like, uh, I'm uh, uh, so yeah, uh, in this, I was not clear with the uh, missing timestamp handling. Like, to be honest, I don't know what exact is. I'll research on it. But yeah, so I was planning to add the remaining operations other than that. So operations means similar operations, the one which I've created for date time. Yes, right? yes. yes. Yeah. And, and missing timestamps is actually the situation when you have some data, you actually miss some timestamps. So there is some seasonality in the data. For example, you're collecting data points every one minute. So okay. uh, sometimes it could be like uh, the one of the uh, cycles doesn't re uh, return the data and you have a gap of two minutes between two, two consecutive data points. So in that kind of case, you need to handle missing timestamps and you need to uh, either in collate data and there are various methods for it you you got to google and see what are the methods so okay. that is that is uh, what missing time staff had to make mm. okay so so um, this is so are we asking to add a timestamp to a to like a, if, if we were looking at a csv file 
um, is this a row that has data but no timestamp between two other timestamps, or is this? No, it is a. It, it can be both. Like it, it can have no timestamp, or it can have no data, or it can be not be there altogether. So uh, these are common things which happen in real life data. So mm -hmm. a lot of times when you when you collect data, you mess on things. Like for example, you are collecting data with Prometheus, and it fails to scrap the data. Uh, you you are left with a data a gap. Now what happens is when you train the model on on uneven gaps, uh, uneven timestamps, mm -hmm. that would that would create another whole lot of problems. So we generally do pre-processing of either we will interpolate the data, we will take mean or of the uh, uh, the, the previous timestamp or the next timestamp, and that those kind of situations. Yeah, there are different techniques possible. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's clearly define, yeah, if you're going to write a proposal, just make sure that you're clear about what, what approach you're going to take, right? Okay. So, um, okay, so, yeah, just, yeah, just, just, you know, pick something, right, and then just clearly outline, you know, what it is that you expect to do there. Um, and regarding the third part, so, yeah, this one. So, I'm, uh, like, what am I supposed to do? I'm exactly add uh, some of these given models, like the uh, cycle learn linear regression models, which are inbuilt or what? Like, I was not clear with this part. So, typically with DFFML, we, we try, we're trying, we really try not to implement things ourselves um, because it's already out there, it's already done, right? We're just really trying to wrap it in something that allows you to use various different data sets and the cleanup operations and everything just uh, to create, you know, a more cohesive environment. Um, so, uh, you know, if this is linked to, um, you know, for example, TensorFlow, right, then you would use TensorFlow and you would implement it within the slash, the model slash TensorFlow directory and near yeah, there. Understood. Yeah. Right. So is that, does that cover what you're curious, like wondering about there or? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. That uh, gives me a clarity. Yeah. yeah. And so anytime, anytime we have a distinct set of dependencies, we create a new plugin. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we create a new plugin and that's covered in the, in the model tutorial. Um, so, uh, but if there's an existing, you know, plugin that, that covers that set of dependencies, then we just add to that. Right. And, and the, the goal here is obviously to allow people because these machine learning libraries are so big, right. It's, it allows people to install only what they need. Right. Okay. So cool. Okay. So we're almost done here. So yes. anything else? One last thing. Oh uh, yeah. I was planning to uh, like write a timeline according to 175 hours and not 350 hours because I believe it's doable in 175 hours. And uh, in the GitHub docs, uh, well, like in the GSOC uh, page, it's clearly mentioned. Like it's it's a beginner issue and it has a three uh, three fifty R. So day, so day which day. one are you talking about? So is it okay? Which yeah which... the same time series forecast. Okay, yeah. you think you it's can do this in one hundred and seventy five? Okay, so the thing is, yeah. adding documentation and examples is going to be fairly time intensive. Um, so so implementing these, uh, it, it, doing this. If so, so here's here's the way that you can prove if okay. So there's multiple things listed, right, for each of these, yeah. and this is the way we typically approach GSOC projects. Is uh, if you've seen the the rubric, and so I'll link the rubric, um, which is on the um, one with the stupid images and the, not the one without the images. Um, so okay. Come on. Okay. So, uh, so if, 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 so the rubric basically says, so, so for us to get an idea, we, we, as, as mentors, when we select students for positions, we, we don't know, you know, I, it's not this, you, your 30 hours of work is, is not the same as somebody else's 30 hours of work, right? Okay. Um, so we need to ha understand, this is why we have like a, a contributions in here. And so not all of the issues have labels. So if, you, if you're going to make a contribution, make sure you have an issue and make an issue yourself. It, like, cause you can do whatever you want, right? Like, you know, if you see, if you have an idea for something, go for yeah. it, right? You know, ideally what you do is you check in first. If it seems obvious, just do it, right? Um, obviously, you know, you don't want to spend too long working in the wrong direction, so it's good to have feedback, but if something is obviously needs to be fixed, then just go do it, right? Make an issue, and then when we get to GSOC time, we'll go through as maintainers and, and we'll label them if they don't already have labels, and then assign the, the points accordingly. 
right? And the reason why this is important here is because this helps us gauge how much time you spent doing those contributions so that we can accurately assess how much time it'll take you to do your project, right? Um, and so, because uh, everything is specific to the person. So uh, what I would suggest you do is if you think that you can do this project in 175 hours, then you should go through and do some of these, right? Like you should go through and you should pick, you know, one of each of these things and do them. Yeah. And, you know, make sure that there's an individual issue for it and, and, and open the issue when you start doing it and, and we'll close the issue when you, we close the PR that's associated, right? And that way we can tell, you know, how long does it take you to do one of those and we'll know whether 175 hours is appropriate or whether we should go with the 350 hours, <laughs> right? Uh, I, we couldn't hear you, Sahil. Oh, we're going to lose it. Oh.